Wars between the two greatest countries, India and Pakistan, created stories that can never be forgotten. After the wars came to settle itself down, the greatest stories of us all started to pave its way, and in a way that can never be forgotten. Like every other family has its anecdotes and archives to share with the others as a way to relive and to be able to cherish the stories of our heirlooms so that we always remember what our roots are and always have a way back home. These mere stories are a realization of who we are and where we belong. This is the story of the Hani family. The story began with my grandfather when he was born on 3rd of March 1927 in Gurdaspur, India. In 1947, which was 75 years ago when British rule came to an abrupt end after 200 years. In 1947, partition was held when Hindus and Muslims migrated to India or Pakistan. Muhammad Hanif Taj migrated to Pakistan when he was just a child in a fan of British army. Imagine the thoughts that must have gone through his mind and who would have thought of the years he lived ahead. As a youngster, he was an active sportsman and won a medal in the first hockey Olympics that was held in Pakistan. In years later, he served in the Pakistan Army and was a part in 1965 and 1971 wars. Uh, during the 1965 war, I was still a small kid and I remember my father was posted to Quetta at that time and uh, although Quetta was quite far off from the main international border, but uh, at time we used to have the siren coming on uh, when the air raid was expected and we all used to run and there used to be a trench outside and we would all go and hide over there. It was more of a fun for us rather than to be, you know, understanding the kind of threat that was coming. Uh, but nevertheless, there was no uh, Indian aircraft which actually came and reached El Quetta during 65. Uh, and then, of course, later on in the 71 war, I, my father was posted to Lahore. And when the war started, the night it started, I very clearly remembered uh, it was a complete blackout and uh, we could see the sparks uh, of the when the shelling was taking place we could see the light at night areas getting lit up because of the shelling so 71 war yes i remember i was still uh, uh, a little uh, i have the memories of this time and uh, uh, earlier when uh, uh, in the 65 war when uh, uh, the ceasefire took place i went with my father He's, his unit was deployed, deployed those days uh, near a place near Kasur. So I went with him and I, as a child, I remember I stayed with him in the tent. Uh, it was a field uh, uh, location. Everything was in a, like a field, you know, you live in a tent, you eat in a tent and you have field toilets and uh, it was a very different environment. But nevertheless, I stayed with my father for about a week or 10 days. During this time, my 
father took me to Kem Karan. We saw Kem Karan, which was uh, captured by Pakistan in 65 war. Uh, the complete town was totally demolished and there was nothing standing. And I went inside that city and I saw Kem Karan and it was totally, you know, demolished. But there was a mosque over there, I very clearly remember, which was still undamaged. In, in the middle of everything, there was a mosque, it was still standing tall and there was no damage which actually took place and uh, of course we saw now i saw a couple of vehicles indian army tanks which were uh, parked along the roadside which the indians had left as they retreated from came there and once uh, our forces took control the cold and harsh nights during war especially during the ceasefire when he was posted in Koita was chaotic time for the Hindi family. In many of the letters he wrote back home, one of them gives us a complete picture of what it was like at the base camps. <laughs> 